Hey devs, in this video, let us now continue to create the player model. In Big 2, there are 4 players, and each of them holds 13 cards. 3 of the players will be controlled by a simple AI, and only one of the players will be controlled by me. In this video, I will deal the 52 cards starting with a random player, then I will also create a function that determines whether the selected cards are a valid Big 2 hand. Let's build the player model. Each player holds 13 cards. What I need is a var for the player's cards. This is just a simple array of cards and we can initialize it with an empty array in the beginning. Or maybe for this testing, I will create 13 cards in our test data again. I will just replicate these cards with copy paste and each of the players will hold these 13 cards initially just for testing. I will also create an array of 4 players for testing. That's all we need for the player model for now. And let's go back to main view and create the view where we can display each player's cards. The idea is we will create just one player view and then replicate it 4 times later in a vertical stack for the 4 players. I will pass the test player here in our content view for the canvas because the cards will now come from the player model. And we will no longer need this scroll view as we will fit all players views in one screen. I will just use one of the players first to construct our view and we'll keep the lazy V grid as we are still using this to display the cards. Let's comment out some things that we don't need for now and just focus on displaying these 13 cards for each player on the screen. I will need to pass the test player here as well in our main calling program. I will also make all the cards face up for now. I will then adjust the spacing and play with the views frame and scale to make the cards stack on top of each other nicely, but still being able to see the rank and suit of each cards. Now this player's view looks good. Let's create a for each to create a similar view for all four players. Now remember that for each requires that the elements must be identifiable. Just like what we did in card struct, let's make the player struct identifiable and provide an ID by using UUID. Now I also want the other three players' cards to be smaller than my cards as they are my opponent's cards and I will not be interacting with their cards anyway and I will make them face down later on and only my player card will be face up. To do that, I will need another var in the player struct to identify that this player is me. This will be a bool initialized to false as three of them will be the opponents and only the last player is my player and this value for the last player is true. In the for each, we will only display the opponent's cards. And for my cards, I will create it outside the for each and will create another lazy V grid at the bottom. And I will remove the scale so that they will appear bigger than the cards of the opponents. I will also add a rectangle placeholder here in the middle. This will be our playing area. Now let's add back the flip card when we tap on the card. Now this doesn't work anymore as we no longer have the at state cards array and we have replaced that with cards array that is now coming from the player model. We need to find the card that's been tapped in the player's array of cards. So for that we need to pass the player in the function too. Now we encounter this error when updating an immutable struct. Do you remember this? Again, the player in for each is immutable as it is a copy of the player here in the at state. What we need to update is the player in the at state. 
So I need to get the player index on where the card is tapped. Similar to how we get the card's index from the array, I will look for the player's index in the player's array. And I need to make the player equatable so we can compare player struck. Let's bring back the logic to display the front and back of the cards when the card is tapped. Now let's try to run this in the simulator. So what I have done so far are all UI logic. How to display cards and flip the cards of a specific player by finding the card in the player's cards array. I will now create another model, which is the game itself. As the game logic cannot be in main view, and the game logic should be UI independent. It shouldn't care how the game is represented on the screen. It is just like a game engine, and all it is concerned about is the game logic, which is to create deck of cards, create players, deal the cards to the players, and create card hands and compare card hands. So I will start to create a struct called Big 2, as that is the name of our game. We start off by creating a deck of cards. This time, it will start off with an empty deck. I don't want the deck initialization to start with full deck straight away. I want it to happen at the start of the game, so this creation of full deck, I will not put this in init, but in a function called create full deck. Then on the game initialization, I can call this function. I will also add shuffle. We know that the array can do shuffle. Let's create that as another function of deck. Now I am ready to deal the cards to the players. Let's create the four players here in Big 2 model, similar to how we created in our test player. Three opponents and one player that's me. Now I need to deal the cards starting with a random player. So I will generate a random index of a player. Let's go to playgrounds and test this out. You know that arrays in Swift starts off with index zero. So if we have four players, the indices are from zero to three. So let's generate a random index from 0 to 3 using arc for random. If we repeat this 100 times, we can see random numbers generated from 0 to 3. So let's use this function here. And we'll create a loop to deal all the cards while there are remaining cards. We'll loop and deal the cards to the players. We'll rename the cards array to deck. So now this reads nicely while cards remaining in deck is greater than zero. The cards remaining function is just returning the count of the cards array. To deal the cards, I am creating a loop and to loop through the player's index starting from that random index that we generated all the way to 3, then go back to 0 again, then 1 to 3, then go back to 0 again, then 1 to 3. Then for each of the player's index in each loop, we need to get one card from the deck and append that to the player's cards array. When we draw a card from the deck, we need to remove it from the deck. Then once there are no more cards in the deck where cards remaining is equal to 0, we stop. I will now create the Big 2 game view model. We need to be able to play the Big 2 game and we will apply the MVVM design paradigm where this view model will contain the game logic. The game logic cannot be in main view. I will create the view model as a Swift file and will name it Big 2 game and this will be a class. This view model will contain the game model Big 2 and I will make it private so that it cannot be accessed anywhere in the view. And the only way to access the model is via this view model class. I will also make this an observed object.
and I will make the class an observable object. Then we will tag the model with at sign publish. By doing this, the view will observe any changes to the model via the view model. And anytime something has changed, it will update the view with the latest information of the model. Everything we show in our view will now have to come from the view model. The players will now have to come from the view model and the view don't have access directly to the model. The players are in the model and it is private. We need to provide some access to that through the view model by creating a computed property of players. We no longer need this at sign state that we use for testing. Instead, we will initialize the view model class and pass it to the program. I will comment out this flip function again just to focus on displaying the cards coming from the view model. We'll also do this again in our main calling program, initializing view model class and passing it to the main program. We'll also display again all the cards facing up. Let's do some cleanup. Our player will start with an empty cards array and will be dealt with the cards at the start of the game. We will also remove flip cards from the opponent's cards as we are not interacting with the opponent's cards. But first, flip card should not be in our main view. Let's put it in our model and we'll change the function to be just select cards as we are not flipping cards in the big two game. So when we tap a card, we will look for the index of the card in the player's array and turn the var selected to true. And it's up to the view what to do with it. In this case, we are going to raise up the card when selected. I will change its Y position to be higher than the cards that are not selected. What are we going to do next with the selected cards? We have to identify its type, whether it's a single, a pair, a full house, straight, royal flush, and so on. And let's create a function for that called evaluate hand. And all we need is just the player who is me. For now, We'll start off with a string value, invalid. Let's create the function. But would it be better if we have a proper type instead of just returning a string? What if we have a hand type that will enumerate all possible hand in the game of big two, like single, pair, three of a kind, straight, flush, full house, four of a kind, straight flush, and royal flush. And of course, invalid if otherwise. Then we can return the hand type instead of the string. Let's build a function. We need to get the cards that are selected in the array of cards. We'll filter those where var selected is equal to true and we'll name it hand.
The function will always return invalid if it doesn't satisfy any of the hand rules. This filter will return another array. All we need to do now first is to count the selected cards. This is our first rule. If there is only one card selected, then the hand type is called a single. Let's try it. What if we select a pair? Currently, it shows invalid, so let's create our pair logic. The second rule is, if there are two cards selected and their ranks are the same, then it is a pair. And let's create a third rule. If there are three cards selected and all of their ranks are the same, then it is a three of a kind. Okay, let's try this again. Next time, we'll create the logic for five cards. If there are things you think can be improved in our model, let me know as well. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Happy coding!